This is not the way this is supposed to go. <laughs> What's up you guys, I'm Jaeger and I'm coming in with a new review today. This is going to be of the Turbot Backlit Water Resistant Keyboard. Uh, I grabbed it off Amazon, I think it's like 60 bucks. Uh, so without further ado, let's hop into this and kind of see what it looks like and then we'll test it for sure. So probably the first thing you're going to notice is going to be the packaging. You're going to get the box, you're going to see it and you're like, this just looks like a cardboard box. Well, what's inside? It doesn't get better, I promise you that. The unboxing experience is very poor. It's just kind of a cardboard box with very cardboard minimalistic accessories. Um, just doesn't really look good, but at the end of the day, like you're not buying a box, you're buying a keyboard. So presentation not that great, but we'll see how the keyboard is. So throw that out of the way. First thing you're gonna notice about the keyboard is it looks really high quality. You have the handhelds down here at the bottom. Um, all the keys look really good. The, the finish looks good. It does look like it's going to get fingerprints moderately bad because it is that glossy appearance. Um, but all in all, it looks like a really great keyboard, just visually. Uh, it doesn't feel cheap. It doesn't look cheap. Uh, you do get a keycap remover for the keys. It does use, I believe, the standard blue switches, um, so you could interchange the keys if you so desired. It only uses one uh, USB key or USB port, uh, which I do like because I currently use the G-Skills keyboard, which requires two. A lot of the Razer ones and a lot of other brands, they require two ports. So this guy is RGB, so you do get all the color spectrum effects with one port, and it's waterproof. It could be really good. I still really want to test the waterproof part. Uh, but real quick, I'm going to kind of do a little bit of an audio profile to kind of showcase the difference between this keyboard um, and a normal keyboard. I predominantly use brown switches, which are quieter switches. These are blues, so they're obviously going to be a little bit louder than the standard browns that I'm used to. Either way, we'll give this a go real quick. Um, so yeah, take this out. So for this, I just quickly grabbed a Corsair K70, I believe. Like I said, this is using brown switches, whereas this is using blue switches. So these are meant to be dampened. These are meant to be quieter. These are the quietest, I guess, mechanical keys you can get. They're not really that quiet, but they're quieter than most. Uh, so this is the K70. Whereas this is going to be those blues. So from normal audio level, these are going to be a little bit clickier, louder, a little bit more high pitched, a little bit more for crisp pop, whereas these, a little bit more monotone, a little bit more toned down, not quite as loud. I prefer the browns. I don't believe you can get this in brown switches. I believe it's only blues. I didn't see an option for brown when I was looking online. Um, but all in all, the audio net levels only affect certain people and not everybody's trying to keep the quietest keyboard out there. So I don't really think that's a big factor. Moving on to what you kind of get with the keyboard in terms of, I guess, extra special keys and layouts and whatnot. Uh, there are no macro keys down the left-hand side like there are with a lot of gaming keyboards. Because um, I do think this keyboard does appeal more to gamers than to most normal people. Another thing you're going to notice is up here with the F keys, that's where you're going to have all of your media buttons. So it's going to be function and then the commands um, for those different media buttons, which I personally really, really don't enjoy. Uh, I like there to be a media center up on like the top right-hand corner along the top. Um, I do find it's kind of annoying to use the function keys. I'm not a big fan of that, uh, but some people are. Uh, in terms of the rest of the keyboard, like I said earlier, the build quality is really, really high. I mean, it just feels really, really solid. It feels like it has like the nice metal trimming on the bottom side. You have the nice rubber grommets that seem to be very heavy duty. It doesn't seem to be like a very cheaply made keyboard. It is non-name brand. I mean, it is Turbot, which you've probably never heard of unless you found this on the Amazon video or Amazon link. Um, the biggest thing is we're just going to test to see if it's waterproof because I really want to know. Uh, I want to get some reps in playing with it, uh, but let's just move on to the waterproof test. That's what you want to see. So this is the only thing that really matters. This is going to be the water test. I have a laptop set up right there so I can see what I'm typing. So everything's still working fine. So uh, we're just going to pour a little water on here. That feels horrible and it pressed the U key a ton. Uh, so it seems like the U key randomly gets pressed, but now that I'm typing, it's kind of fixing itself. That probably helped. So it seems like the U key is just continually being pressed. Uh, we didn't use that much water, but uh, I'm not really sure if this is going to keep working. Yeah. 
I'm gonna unplug it and replug it in real fast. So after I drive this thing out, it seems to be working perfectly fine now. Um, all the keys are still functioning. It's not rapidly pressing. So if you do put a moderate amount of water on there, you do need to dry this thing out. But like I said, that's only if you're using a moderate amount of water. It's not like super bad, but I mean, it was still working pretty fine. Um, all in all, I think it's really cool that it still works after being completely drenched. I mean, I definitely think it's pretty neat that four. It's now pressing four. It already stopped. So, uh, yeah, after you get done soaking this thing in water, I would just uh, dry it off or air dry it out and everything will be fine. All in all, it's pretty cool if I get a $60 keyboard. Uh, it's not super terrible or anything. The build quality is pretty high and it seems to be waterproof and functioning. So, all in all, definitely worth it. Thank you guys for checking this out. If you have any questions, comments, or questions, comments, concerns, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out.